So welcome to this lesson. We're going to do uh, some categories to get started. Don't worry about N, we'll, we'll start over with a new one. Okay? So, what means um, occupation? What means occupation? Occupation is your job, what you do for a living. Hmm? All right, so let me put this down here. And here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Bogdan, Lara? Yes. Mm -hmm. And all right, ready, set, go. Mm, that's right. <laughs> 10 seconds. Uh oh. All right. Time's up. Da 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 da. All right. Uh, let's see. Where's my sheet? Okay. So I only got six. Did anybody get all 10? Of course. I only have one. You only got one. <laughs> yeah. All right, so which one did you get, Bogdan? Nine. Number nine, method of transportation. What do you have there? Llama. A llama? Yes. Uh, all right, so uh, maybe jump on the back of a llama and see see how it's going, yeah? All right, good. Uh, Stan, how many did you, did you get? Mm, five or six, something like that. Okay, which ones do you have? I have uh, electronic gadget is laptop. Okay. Uh, the country is uh, Latvia. Latvia. Nice. Okay. Uh, then the method method of transportation is Lamborghini. <laughs> Lam Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Okay, Lamborghini. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So. Fancy. Uh, the thing that has drives, well, probably in someone's dreams, it's a leather jacket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, which one was that? That's uh, number seven, right? Leather jacket. Good. So the restaurant would be uh, Lucy's. Okay. The, must be something like this anywhere in the world. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere Lucy owns a restaurant. Good. And then the place to hang out is uh, Litva, probably. Litva? Well, yeah, you can hang out in Litva, right? Uh, Litva is Lithuania, right? I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lat it's uh, Estonia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithu Lithuania. Is that what you're talking about, the country? Yeah. Okay. But in, in Russian, we call it uh, just Litva. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes a little bit confusing. All right, Vlad, what do you have? I have six words. Uh, I don't know if it can be a restaurant loft. Okay, what's it called? Uh, huh? What is your restaurant name? Loft. Loft, like L-O-F-T. No, uh, school subjects literature. Okay. Uh, so sports, long jumping. Okay, good. Uh, places to hang out, I don't know, sport equipment, I don't know. Uh, countries, Litva, uh, okay. Lith, uh, mm, I forgot. <laughs> Lithua, Lithuania. Lithuania, yeah. Good. And the place so, to hang out is uh, Latvia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, things of, that uh, have stripes, it's my left hand. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, so, uh, methods of transport, long jumping. Okay, long jumping, good. And Any maybe other? children books, uh, literature. Okay. All right, Ooh, Gabby's not here, right? Lera, what do you have? Um, I got a second is a literature. Mm -hmm. um, third is a lifting weights. Okay. Um, five is, a, I think, lake mm, on the shore of lake. Sorry, lake. A lake is a place to hang out? 
Maybe. Why okay. not? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Good. I just um, wanted to know which category. Six is uh, Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And uh, electronic gadget is a uh, laptop. Okay. Anything else? Oh, uh, no. Okay, good. Uh, me, I had, I couldn't think of anything that you all would know as a restaurant, but uh, I have literature here. A place to hang out is the library, of course. You get a lot of homework done, right, at the library. The country I picked is Laos. Laos is um, in the, uh, Southeast Asia, over by Australia, Indonesia. Uh, electronic gadget is a laptop. Um, mode of transportation is longboard. Uh, this is a type of skateboard that's really long. Uh, and then as a children's book, I decided on Larry Potter. <laughs> but probably not, not real, okay? It's um, like Harry Potter built Larry Potter, right? Yeah, his, his younger brother, right? Good. Uh, Taya, if you want to tell me, if you want to play along, uh, you can either unmute your mic or type your answers in chat. Here. Okay. Shall we do another one? Yes, we'll do one more and then we'll read the, the story. We'll get into the story. Okay, so, boink. Oh, uh, what do you think of the letter E? The letter E probably sucks, huh? Should we try a different one? L, we just did. Uh, oh, that's a great letter. G? No, L. L? How about M? <laughs> But S. S is pretty good, right? S is yeah, okay. usually pretty easy. All right. These will be different categories. So when I hit the start button, it'll, uh, it'll show different categories. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Right. Go. Oh, wow, that was fast. Okay, five seconds. Four and three, two, one. Maybe. All right, let's see if uh, Taya wrote anything. No, Taya didn't write anything in chat either. But if she wants to unmute her microphone, she can tell us. All right, um, here we go. Round number two, Bogdan, what are you? <clears throat> I have one, two, three, four. Four, I have four today. Fantastic. When, which yes, ones do you have? Okay, first of first is sun. Okay. The uh, thing the thing you shouldn't see, touch. I shouldn't touch sun. Okay. It I, would I be don't, bad for me. Yeah, it would be pretty bad for you. I I don't know if you could ever get there, but maybe someday. Okay, six is sausages. Okay, good. Uh seven is cigarettes. Okay. Cigarettes nine. starts with a C, but that's okay. Uh, number nine. And nine is secret Hitler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just learned that. All right, good. Stan, what do you got? Uh, for ninth, I also got secret Hitler. Mm -hmm. So uh, something you keep hidden is salary. Uh, celery also starts with no. a C. Uh, no, the celery. Uh, oh, wait a second. like what you? Yeah, how yeah, much yeah. money you make? Okay, good. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I would definitely keep hidden. Okay. So, things that can kill you would be spider. Okay. Uh, no, that's the seventh one. Oh, sorry. Sure. Uh, and for the things you shouldn't touch is someone's property. <laughs> Starts with S, right? Sure. Uh, internet lingo is Serbian. Serbian? Yeah. Like Serbian? Like a person? Yeah. All right. Uh, and... Uh, I don't think, I think it starts with C, uh, the breakfast thing is cereal, right? It's, yeah. It starts with C, so that's yeah. 
that's not the one. All right. All right. Is that it? Yeah, that's all I got. Okay, good. Uh, Vlad, what do you have? Uh, things you shouldn't touch socks. Socks. Uh, car, Skoda. Cars, Skoda. Skoda. All right, good. Uh, breakfast language. Oh, breakfast uh, sandwich. Okay, yeah. Uh, things that can kill your snake. Mm -hmm. And uh, something you keep secret. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something you keep hidden in secrets. Okay, great. Lera, what do you have? Uh, I have uh, the first is uh, soul. Soul. Sun. No, no, soul. O U L. Someone's soul. Okay, sounds good. I, I don't know that I agree with that one. Touching somebody's soul means you really made them feel good. So. No, you physically touch. No, you can. <laughs> okay, okay. No uh, problem. Six is a sandwich. Okay. Uh, seven is a scissors. Scissors? Scissors. And it's all. Okay, good. Taya might have something, we don't know. Uh, let's see. Pull this out a little bit. So my answers are a snake, unless you know what kind it is. Uh, so internet lingo, I would say sup might be a good one. Sup is short for what's up. Um, I couldn't oh. think of. I, I know another one. Yeah. Breakfast I just I just don't know how to pronounce correctly. Correctly, let me uh -huh. write it. Okay. Oh, Taya's got something. No, it's me. It's me. Sag. Good. All yeah. right. Oh, that's, that's you. The, yeah, that's the one we learned together. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I knew that one. Okay, so Sag. Uh, if you if you type in any of these words that you don't know, you could just go uh, to an image generator and, and there you go. You get this uh, this Pepe frog uh, or Peepo frog, depending on who you talk to, and it's just him being sad and <clears throat> sad. yeah, sad, sad. Good. All right, Taya's got sharp things for number one. That's pretty cool. Uh, there we go. But yeah, Sag, uh, Sag is pretty funny. You'll see it on Twitch everywhere. Uh, yeah, sharp things. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. For number three, I have Sienna. It's like a, it's like a dark red color. Okay, Scarlet is another really good answer for that one. Scarlet uh, is a is a red color. All right, what else do we got? Number seven, I got spiders. I think someone else said spiders. Spiders. There we go. Um, let's see. So for the car, I had Supra. It's a Toyota. Toyota oh, Supra. I wanted to write it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a popular model. I thought nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Skoda is the car company. Supra is the car model. So, uh, for athlete, I have Shockey. He was a tight end playing American football for the Giants. Of course, you guys probably don't know him. Uh, I also had Sandwich, Breakfast Sandwich, pretty popular. Uh, I had Soap here because I wanted a unique answer. And if you need too much soap, you probably die, right? Uh, and then I had secret here. That was a good answer. And then I have the card game Spades. Uh, this is a pretty fun game if you ever learn how to play it. And let's see. Yeah, so secrets here. Okay, good. So uh, pretty fun game. Uh, we did pretty good. 
maybe next time we'll all just work together and see if we can beat the timer because the timer is pretty pretty fast here. We can also change it if we if we want to change it. Um, yeah, it could be a fun game to to build our vocabulary and get our brains. Into the okay. Uh, so we did read a story, the Cask of Amontillado, and uh, I wanted to kind of move forward from that, uh, move kind of in the same direction, go into uh, mystery and uh, see how you guys like different stories that I can find. Uh, I started looking at Sherlock Holmes stories, but they're generally pretty long and it will take us three or four weeks to, to finish one, I think. So uh, this one here is shorter. Uh, it's by this man, Frank Jones, and I couldn't find much information about him. But when I was reading the story, uh, I was getting a feeling that he was not from the United States. And he is actually not from the United States. Uh, but um, I don't want to spoil it for you. So if you get an idea of where he's from, uh, let me know and, and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Uh, but it's, it's interesting through somebody's writing, you can either tell where they're from uh, regionally in the United States or if they're from some other English speaking country. So kind of a fun fact for you there. Uh, do all of you have a printout of this story? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. If you don't, uh, I it's always available on the uh, on the drive. Let's see. Uh, I have to move this one second. So on the remote drive, if you need a link to it, I can send you a link. Um, here. So again, we are group A, I have to change the time, and then here is our group, and this story is here in, in PDF form. Okay. So this is a mystery, uh, mystery story. It's uh, pretty fun. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, but yeah, again, we might not finish it this week. So if you're terrible at it, holding back, you could always finish it on your own. Uh, it's got an interesting ending, so I want you to kind of think about how it will end uh, if we don't finish, okay? So I will read the first little bit and then I'll ask you guys to, to read a little bit as we go, okay? If there are any words, so what I like to do um, when I have the written version is uh, I'll get like a highlighter and then I'll highlight the word and then write somewhere uh, if you don't understand a word. Um, and this is why I like having the printed out version. But if you don't have the printed out version, you can follow along on the screen. Okay? So feel free to interrupt at any time, uh, but I'll go ahead and get started. So the name of the story is Wish You Were Here. Lawn ornaments are not capable of writing postcards from faraway places, or are they? Ornaments uh, is anything that you use for decoration. So you can have Christmas tree ornaments, for example, or uh, ornaments on a dress or something like that. So lawn ornaments are things that you put on your lawn to make your lawn look better, okay? They were walking toward a car when Dorothy noticed him. Isn't he darling, Nora, she said, stopping and pointing. On the way home from Nora's cottage, they had made their usual stop at the donut shop. And coming out, Dorothy's eye had, caught by, had been caught by an object in the garden center next door. Kind of cute, her friend agreed, if you like that sort of thing. But I do, said Dorothy, and I know exactly the place for him. You know that spot alongside the irises in the rockery sort of arbor? Nora nodded. Well, can't you just see him perched there? Come on, Nora. Let's see how much they want for it. The sign said Van Houten, and it wasn't hard to place the ruddy-faced man taking off his leather gloves 
as a Dutchman. Can I help you ladies? The, the rolling L sound was a dead gateway. Ladies? I was interested in that gnome, said Dorothy. How much are you asking? He's a cute little rascal, isn't he? Said the nurseryman. Well, he's marked at $25. He seemed to be thinking. Look, I'll tell you what happened. I sold him once already, but the people brought him back for credit. Didn't suit their garden, I guess. I'll let you have him for $20. Do you really want it? Nora said, asked in an undertone. Do you really think, don't you think it's a bit, well, corny? Dorothy walked around the gnome admiring the red and white toadstool in which he sat and the mischievous expression on his face. Yes, she said at last. Yes, I really want him, Laura. Uh, don't you mind, do you? If we put him in the trunk? Will you put him in the back of the car for us? She asked the nursery. Room. All right, so I'll stop here, get some questions. Uh, I have some pictures here. So this is a, these are some irises. So irises are these yellow uh, and purple, purple or bluish flower flowers. So she wants to put this gnome next to the iris flowers, next to the arbor. An arbor is just an archway, and it's usually got some lattices uh, or some, some sticks in kind of a cross fashion so that plants, as they grow, can grab onto them and climb up. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't hard to place the ruddy-faced man taking off his leather gloves as a Dutchman. This one is kind of a tough, uh, tough sentence here, but to place somebody means to uh, get an idea that they are a certain way, right? So if I hear somebody speaking outside, I could say, uh, I, could, I could easily place that person as a Czech person, or uh, I could easily place that woman as an old, older woman if I just hear her voice. Uh, we have the surname Van Houten, and his ruddy face uh, is just kind of an old, uh, wrinkly face. She could tell that he's a Dutchman, both by his last name and then the way he started speaking. Can I help you, ladies? He had some rolling L sound. Uh, what about uh, Corny? Corny. Corny. It's a... Uh, kind of uh, silly. It's uh, silly in a way that you don't want to be involved with it, right? I mean, it's a, it's a garden gnome, right? Who wants, who wants a, a little garden gnome in their, in their lawn? Don't you think it's a little weird, right? And then uh, he had a, a mischievous expression. A mischievous expression. So he had kind of this look on his face, even though he wasn't real, he had this look on his face like he was about to get into some trouble, right? Really strange. Good. Were there any other words that you had a hard time with? No. Okay. Easy. <clears throat> All right, Leda, can you start here? Uh, where, where I must start? Uh, when they got to Dorothy's place. Uh -huh. uh, when they got to Dor Dorothy's place, uh, Nora went to give her a hand, uh, lifting the gnome. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'll get the wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. uh, he's here heavier than I thought, said Dorothy. Uh, they tr trundled. Trundled. Uh, trundled. Yeah. Uh, him across the lawn and then uh, bracing the uh, feet against the rocks, uh, lifted him into position. Uh, doesn't he look just perfect there? Dorothy bubbled, uh, as if the spot had just been waiting for him. Not bad, said Nora. Ted, uh, when he was alive, uh, never liked ornamental things in the garden, but now there's only myself to please. Uh, no, she said, uh, putting him, her hand uh, on Nora. Nora's arms. Uh, I'll put the wheelbarrow away later. 
come uh, inside and I'll uh, put the keto on 40. Yes, good, good. So uh, they lifted the, the gnome up into place. They trundled him across the lawn. So trundle means they have something heavy and they're just trying to carry it as best they can, trying to be careful not to break anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, trundled him over. Um, what's the brace? Mean? Brace. So to brace means to, to hold yourself steady in place, right? So they braced their feet against the rocks and then lifted him up, right? Uh, so bracing just means holding steady, holding really steady, okay? Good. Uh, and then Dorothy bubbled, so she's not just speaking. Doesn't he look just perfect there? <laughs> right? Like, uh, really, really happy about it. Okay, good. Uh, and who do you think Ted is? Uh, her wife or, or her husband. <laughs> husband, husband, her husband. So when Ted was alive, he never liked ornamental things in the garden. Now, now it's just me, no? Good, so uh, Ted's not around to say, get rid of that stupid no. Good. All right, uh, Bogdan? Yes. <clears throat> When Nora had gone home, Dorothy went out again and swil swiveled, 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 swiveled the gnome until his lopsided green was directed towards the living room picture window. There, Mr. Gnome, now, now I am able to enjoy you winter and summer, she said. The gnome, one I have closed in the beginning, Beginnings of, of a wink seemed to be agreeing with her. He sure looks cute, Mrs. G Graham. She gave uh, a start and turned around. It was only Norman, the mailman, standing there with his empty bag, but she felt her che cheeks. cheeks flush and... Uh, thought uh, that, she, that he might have heard her talking to herself. Just puts a nice fishing touch to garden. He said uh, flicking back on the leak of hair that always got behind his glasses. Norman was only in his mid-twenties, but he took an almost feather, featherly interest if feath Fatherly, fatherly, fatherly. Inter interest uh, in the other older people on his road. If he didn't see one of his customers for a couple of days, he'd make a point of knocking, make sure everything was all right. Good, good. Okay, so Dorothy goes out and swivels the gnome. So swivel is another way of saying turn, right? So the gnome was facing one way and she swiveled him so that he would be facing her house, right? Uh, and his lopsided grin, lopsided means off center. So if you notice these gnomes, they always have a grin that's kind of, you know, up on the side of their cheek. This is a lopsided grin. Right? So anything that is off center is lopsided. Uh, let's see. And his eye, his one eye half closed in the beginnings of a wink. So he's got this lopsided grin and he's almost winking. Uh, seems to be agreeing with her, right? Uh, he sure looks cute, Mrs. Graham. She, she gave a start. So a start means like a, almost like a little bit of a, a screech. So someone comes up behind her and says, he sure looks cute, Mrs. Graham. Oh, and he turns around. Yeah, so uh, it was only Norman, the mailman, his empty bag. Her cheeks flushed a little bit because, well, she was just talking to herself. So that's a little weird. Right? Um, and he flicks back a lick of hair that always got behind his glasses. So a lick of hair is just one little strand and he's flicking it out of the way. And you could see he takes a little bit uh, extra interest in some of the older people on his route. Good. Uh, let's uh, do, I don't know, 
that much. Who's next? Where did the uh, where did Vlad go? Vlad. Mm -hmm. This just uh, what I threw. Uh, said Dorothy uh, gratefully. Uh, the spot seems made for him. She had her, her whole skirt uh, on. Uh, she had her house got on and uh, was having breakfast in the kitchen next morning when the doorbell rang. Uh, through the window, uh, the side door, she could see it uh, was Norman and uh, she wondered uh, who would be sending uh, her. A registered letter. Her register letter uh, this time of the year. Um, morning, Miss. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Garham. Uh, he said uh, through a better tell, some uh, kids have uh, been up to mischief uh, again. Look what they did to your draw. Mm. No, no more, no, no man, uh, she said, uh, stepping out onto the porch. Uh, the gnome had been uh, tippered, tipped, tipped, tipped uh, from uh, his perch, perch and uh, uh, was uh, lying uh, face down among uh, the uh, sweet William. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll put it up again for you, he said, uh, resting uh, his, bag, uh, his bag on uh, the seats. Uh, maybe it was uh, those uh, Ellen boys. Uh, he and Dorothy had talked uh, before about uh, the random incidents. Mm -hmm. in yeah, good, good. Random incidents of petty uh, vandalism. Uh, that seemed uh, to plague uh, the neighborhood in cycles. Uh, for sale, uh, signs uh, would be pulled up uh, in the night of in the night and uh, stuck in uh, front of the other houses. Uh, lawn chairs. Uh, would be tripped over and the flower bed uh, trampled. Trampled. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy realized, uh, released, or realized, realized, you had it. Realized, yeah, realized. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it uh, wasn't fair to blame the alien boys, mm -hmm. but sometimes uh, when they went down uh, the streets, uh, shooting, uh, shouting obscenities. Shouting, Obscenities. Mm -hmm. With their friends and uh, hitting every road sign uh, they passed, uh, it was hard to believe they were not behind uh, the mischief. Okay, perfect. Okay, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> perfect, very perfect. <laughs> oh, all right, good, good job. Uh, there's a lot of tough It words. was very difficult, and uh, yeah. I also don't understand uh, anything yeah that's why i'm here uh we're gonna we're gonna work through it together there are a lot of um, difficult words so uh so she has breakfast right she has her house coat on which is just something you wear around the house and she's having breakfast the doorbell rings she sees it's the mailman and so why is the mailman here uh someone is sending me a registered letter that's the only reason she can think of. But it wasn't that she had a registered letter, it was that her, her gnome was pushed over, right? And uh, her name is uh, Mrs. Graham. Uh, and who was it, Norman? Norman says, hey, look what they did to your dwarf. She says, it's not a dwarf, it's a gnome, right? It's <laughs> very important not to call her gnome a dwarf. Uh, also, this word gnome, uh, the G is kind of silent, so I'm just going to leave it off. What about uh, mischief? 
Yeah, mischief is uh, is uh, just any kind of pranks that you play, any kind of tricks that you play on people that uh, that uh, are not very nice, right? It's it's only to make yourself happy, right? Uh, so, for example, someone might uh, put toilet paper all over your car, or someone might, I don't know, throw eggs at you, or uh, I guess a popular one in Russia is to throw grapes from the balcony, right? So when you throw grapes at people, this is mischief, right? Uh, okay, and so the gnome had been tipped from his perch. So a perch is somewhere up high, and he'd been tipped over. Uh, a perch is also maybe what you would give a bird. So a bird has its perch, it just sits way up high. Uh, and it was facing face down in the Sweet William. I didn't even know what Sweet William was. So I had to look it up. It's a type of uh, flower. And so I put a picture of it here on the first page. This is Sweet William. It's this, these feathery edges, really beautiful flowers. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there were random incidents of petty vandalism. Random just means by chance. Incidents means occurrences, happenings. Uh, petty means not big crime, but very, very little crime, right? And vandalism is just what I was talking about, this mischief, putting toilet paper around cars and throwing eggs at people. This is vandalism. Uh, spray painting on, on, uh, on buildings, that's vandalism, right? Uh, and it seems to plague the neighborhood in cycles. So it comes and goes. When the kids get bored, they go break stuff. And when they're done breaking stuff, when it's not fun for them anymore, they just stop doing it, right? Um, what means plague you the neighborhoods in cycles? So plague the neighborhood in cycles. So it, it, the vandalism comes and hits the neighborhoods in, in cycles, which means maybe in, in these three weeks, there was a lot of vandalism. And then there was no vandalism. And then there was a lot of vandalism again. And then there was no vandalism. So as kids get bored, they just stop breaking things. And then when they get bored of not breaking things, they go back to breaking things, okay? Okay, good. So here are some examples. So for sale signs would be pulled up and stuck in front of other houses. Ha ha ha, what a funny joke, right? Lawn chairs would be tipped over and flower beds trampled. So they would go into flower beds and trample them, right? Terrible. Uh, yeah, and then they would also shout obscenities. They went down the street shouting obscenities. Ha ha, you big jerks and everybody is stupid, you know? So shouting obscenities. You can imagine the words they would say probably a lot worse. But it's obscenities are bad words, right? All right, good. Anything else? Clear picture? So there's some bad kids, and they think that the bad kids knocked over this door. Okay. Uh, there's uh, another word, porch. Porch. Porch is the, the spot in front of your house. Um, you get a nice image of it. Anyway, porch. So a porch is uh, just any kind of area at the front of a house. So this is a porch, this is a porch. This is a nice porch, right? It's got a lot of area there for chairs. So kids would come and knock over the lawn chairs and laugh and have a lot of fun. All right? Yep. Yeah. Good image. All right, so uh, let's see. Stan, can you read this part? Put on here. Uh, just give me a second. Sure. Uh, here we go. Well, thank you, Norman. It was very kind of you, she said as he as he picked up uh, his bag after writing the gnome. The gnome. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. uh, after breakfast, she took a damp cloth uh, out of the garden and wiped away the earth, staining the gnome's face. Uh, there you are, old fellow, she said. Feel better now? He smiled his slightly conspirational smile. Conspiratorial. 
conspiratorial. Oh, conspiratorial smile. Mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of days, nothing more happened. The one morning when she went to the window, she was surprised to see that he had been pushed over again. This is too much, she said furiously. Too much. I'm going to put a stop to it right now. She put on her shoes and, not even bothering to leave the gnome up again, strolled up the street to the slightly run-down bungalow uh, where, the, uh, where the Ellens lived. Mm -hmm. Old yellowed newspapers clung to the fence and a tired-looking dog rolled over the step and sniffed Dorothy's stack half-heartedly. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, look, Mrs. Ellen, she said when the pesty, uh, somewhat overweight woman she knew only by sight uh, opened the door. I don't want to make any trouble, but I'm afraid those boys of yours have been causing damage in my garden. Mm -hmm. My boys? She grabbed the elastic of her under underwear and yanked it up under her stained yellow dress. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Dorothy went on. Someone keeps pushing over my garden ornament, and I'm sure they know something about it. All right, one more paragraph and then... And then... Okay. Uh, my boys, huh? Well, let me tell you something, you snoopy old bat. My Tom's gone out to Calgary to visit his uncle and Fred's walking up north with the forestry. So don't be so, blo so bloody quick to blame people who ain't done nothing. And she slammed the door. Okay, great, great. Okay, so <clears throat> everything's good, right? And then, oh no, the gnome is pushed over again. And of course, it's already in her mind that it's the Allen boys uh, down the street. So she puts on her shoes and starts walking over there. Gonna get those boys, right? Uh, and so we have a nice image of the of the uh, place that they're at. A bungalow is a type of house, uh, and it's just a little house, something like this, right? But their house. So is... the rundown bungalow is like an old one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this this is kind of a new, nice one. This is a really nice one, right? But this theirs is all rundown. Uh, there's some yellow newspaper. So, you know, if you have newspaper that's out for a long time, it starts turning yellow. So this newspaper, they just stuck on the fence for some reason and it was turning yellow. The house looked really terrible. You know? uh, there was a dog, a tired looking dog, rolled off the step and sniffed Dorothy's leg half-heartedly. So half-heartedly means you're not really into it, right? So the dog is like, Okay, go ahead. All right, uh, we have pasty. Pasty is very white, no sun at all, very pale, okay? She was overweight uh, and uh, Dorothy only knew her by sight. So Dorothy had never spoken to her, but she only knew her by sight. I don't wanna make any trouble, but I'm afraid your boy's been causing damage in my garden. Okay. My boys, she grabbed the elastic of her underwear and pulled it up under <laughs> underneath her yellow string dress. Pretty gross, right? Okay. Uh, yes, someone keeps pushing over my ornament and they should know something about it. Okay. This paragraph right here has a lot of clues as to where the author is from. My boys. Bloody, eh? bloody for example, right? Sorry? Bl bloody. Exactly. Yeah, bloody, bloody, uh, that's not such a big clue. Uh, this one here, my boys, A. Eh? So if you know a country where they like to say A eh, a lot, uh, Tom's gone out to Calgary. Calgary is a city in this country. And Fred's uh, working up north in the forestry. Okay. So there you go, some clues. So her boys are gone. They're not in the town. Someone else is knocking over this gnome. It's not her boys, right? And she gets the door slammed in her face. Boom. Dorothy stood for a moment at a loss. Her face was hot with embarrassment and she turned and walked down the path, not daring to turn around in case Mrs. Allen was watching her from her window. The next morning, the gnome was gone. 
At first, Dorothy thought he must be, uh, he must be concealed among the clumps of day lilies at the foot of the rockery. But when she went out to the garden, there was no sign of him. This time her anger was mixed with other feelings. She was a little bit afraid, she realized. She looked up and down the empty street, but no curtain moved. Most of the people were at work. She went inside and found the number she kept handy by the phone and called the police. So we're about out of time, uh, but uh, I wanna get your first impressions. Uh, who do you think is knocking over this gnome? Any ideas? Who is doing this vandalism? Is it gnome? Uh, might Norman be. himself. Norman, Norman the mailman? Could be, could be. I won't give it away. Uh, could be Norman, could be someone else entirely. So we'll find out next week. And what uh, about uh, the nationality of the author? Is he Australian? No. No? No. Maybe it'll come, it'll come clear if you, if you go down to the next page. <laughs> At the bottom <laughs> of the next page, you have this here. All right, so uh, we have uh, oh. <laughs> we have a pretty interesting story. Uh, someone keeps messing with this gnome. Uh, it will it will get a little bit better, a little bit more exciting. So next week, we just saw that the gnome is gone, uh, and the story will get much more interesting from there, and it will have a fairly surprising ending. I thought the ending was, was fairly surprising. You guys did good? Um, do you like this level of story? Is it uh, bad, good, about right? A little yeah. Bit too, yeah. Okay, not too hard, not too easy. <laughs> Learning something? Okay, good. Um, does anybody have any questions? No. Well, I, I I just want to say that uh, I thought, firstly, I thought he was uh, from England because of the word bloody. Mm -hmm. uh, from from the movies I, I watched, they, they really like to say things like bloody hell. And, yeah, 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 right. So he's, he's actually from Canada. Uh, and if you ever hear any Canadians, especially uh, older Canadians, they love saying A eh, after everything. I love saying A after everything, A. So uh, maybe if you ever watch a movie with Canadians, uh, Calgary is a city, um, a big city up in uh, Canada. Uh, and then a lot of people work for the forestry in Canada. So up north in the forestry. Uh, uh, that, well, that was a big clue. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, they do use some British uh, words, especially older Canadians, they'll use words like bloody, not all the time, but, but uh, fairly often. And then um, there were some other things that were, that were kind of a clue. So for example, neighborhood. Uh, ah, okay, so on, on the first page, it was garden center. Uh, let's see, where is the word center? Uh, here. So right here is the word center and it is spelled with R-E inverted, right? And this is the British way of spelling, but Canada adopts spelling in that way sometimes. The reason oh, yeah. why you... Yeah, it's, because, uh, it's probably because uh, the Canada used to be the British colony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still, it's still in the Commonwealth. So if you're from Canada, you're a part of the Commonwealth. Uh, so it's still a big community there. But the reason why you know it's Canada and not any other English speaking country is because this word has changed, but the word neighborhood, uh, when they were talking about the kids making mischief in the neighborhood, neighborhood is not spelled with a U. Uh, maybe not. There we go. Okay. Uh, cool. 
Is it going to find it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so here's the word neighborhood. And in British English, there will be a U in there. Yeah. So oh, yeah. some very subtle clues there. But, um, but yeah, it was funny. As I was reading the story, I thought to myself, this person definitely is not from the United States. And then as it went on, I was like, oh, he's from, he's from Canada. <laughs> and I looked it up online and of course uh, it was true. So uh, pretty interesting. Okay, good. Uh, anything else? You guys good? Yeah. Uh, is there any possible chance we could play uh, Sucre de Hitler on the one yeah, of uh, our ongoing lessons? Yeah, sure, sure. That might be tough to do uh, online, but I, I will look. I will look into it. I'll look into it and see see how we can do it because that is a fun game. Does anybody have any problem playing Secret Hitler? No. No. Lera, are you okay with playing a game called Secret <laughs> Hitler? I I don't feel played oh. it. Uh, ever. Sorry, one more time. I haven't played it ever. You've never played it? Okay. I'm, I'm just asking because I, I've had students in the past say that they don't want to play a game with the name Hitler in it. Uh, they feel bad and, and it, they don't want to associate with that kind of thing. So I just want to make sure everybody is okay with that kind of thing. Uh, it is a fun game and it's if, if you like playing Mafia, or if you ever enjoyed playing Mafia, playing Secret Hitler is also quite fun, okay? Okay, any other questions, comments, concerns? No. Okay. All right, so we'll finish the story next week. Uh, enjoy your men's day holiday, whatever, <laughs> whatever this, this holiday is. And uh, Taya, thank you for joining. Uh, it's too bad we couldn't hear you again, but uh, thank you for joining. And have a good week, everybody. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.